Hey, what's going on everybody? Baseball so 294 here back. Now I know it's been a little bit of time since I've actually released an airsoft related video on my channel. I've been pretty busy with work and school and things like that, so I apologize for this long gap here. But I have something really, really special for you that I think you guys might enjoy. Um, here inside this nice pristine black gun case that the gun does come with, I should mention that, um, is the VFC officially licensed by Umarex, the 417 or 417 350C. So all of the trademarks being that it's licensed by Umarex, who has the rights to H and K trademarks, means that everything is going to be an exact replica to the best of their ability of the real steel H and K 417. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the lock case here. It's got four locks um, or four little clips on the outside to keep this full length gun case secure. And I'll go ahead and show you guys what this nice Alright guys, gun now that we got the gun case open, I want you to bear with me right now. I know that it's hard to see the gun fully. Uh, I want to give you more or less an overview of what you'll see when you first open up the case. So first and foremost, you can see the gray padded foam around the inside of the case. Now it is shaved down to custom fit this gun itself. So if you wanted to utilize this case for a different weapon in the future you certainly can but it may not fit as snugly as you would see this one fitting so just an interesting side note so aside from the gun you also get one polymer based 120 round mid capacity magazine they do make high capacity magazines they hold 500 rounds for it but being that this is a DMR set I don't really want to go ahead and waste my time and, and spend money on a high cap high capacity mag so um, VFC's website has magazine options for this gun as well as airsoft GI and and Evix, so you can go ahead and order either high caps or additional mid capacity magazines depending on your preference. So the last thing that you'll receive is um, your owner's manual through H&K. So it's pretty standard, just talks about your cleaning and jamming skills or techniques as well as how to charge your battery and any other maintenance things that you would need to know for this weapon specifically. So, all right guys, once again, I'm gonna go ahead and cut scene, give you a little bit closer overview. All right guys, gun. I went ahead and took the gun out of the case and the first thing you may be noticing is this is an incredibly long rifle. Um, with the stock fully collapsed in the position it is right now, it's actually measuring at 870 millimeters. And now if we were to extend the 417 stock fully, it would measure out to 950 millimeters. So, um, it definitely is able to, you know, uh, give yourself some length and then it's also weighing in at just over 13 pounds with the bipod attached So it's definitely a little hefty gun um, if we want to talk about metal versus uh, a plastic base of the gun itself We can start from the front the front and barrel assembly itself is actually steel So your flash hider um, and your outer barrel assembly is all steel and then the body itself both upper lower receiver and the rail system and the included bipod is made out of CNC to aluminum so that's a nice feature that VFC is tending to give on all of their high-end guns and a lot of their mid-range guns as well the only plastic parts really on this gun are going to be your magazine your pistol grip and your stock itself now the stock and your ergonomic uh, 417 styled grip which is definitely nice I should also mention they have the true 417 um, stock on it as well which I'll get a little bit more into when I break the gun down here and show different parts of it um, those are both nylon reinforced um, or nylon fiber reinforced plastic and then you have a polymer based magazine so um, they're not going to crack on you just like a cheap ABS plastic. Alright guys I went ahead so and zoomed nice. in on the front half of the gun just because there's not as much to talk about here so I wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way. Starting in the bottom left hand corner you can see the orange steel flash hider. It's your standard 14 millimeter counterclockwise threading system however it does look like it's got some sort of metal U-shaped clip in it. Um, and so I don't know if that's like a lock pin system just like the new G&G combat machine lines have. Um, so what I've found out a little bit online is that it's just for show and just for looks. I'm not quite sure if that's true or not. So being that it's a steel barrel system, I'm not too concerned with stripping the threads. But I'll go ahead and update the description below when I do try and get this flash hider off. So... I want to give you guys that piece of information and it, it'll be the exact same thing if you guys get the 417D, the 417D long version or the 417C. So uh, just be wary of that and you know if you guys know what it is go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. Um, it's a free float 
outer barrel system. So I've heard that some people have issues with wobble uh, of that outer barrel. Mine does not wobble at all. So I was definitely happy with that. I was actually a little bit surprised that it didn't wobble, but you know, knock on wood, it doesn't have any issues like that. So moving to the bipod, as again, as I mentioned, it's made out of CNC aluminum. Um, you can detach it and it does have these little um, spring retention clips here that you can actually use to extend it or retract it. So pretty similar to every other bipod on the market. There's also these knobs that you can turn to extend the barrel, or excuse me, extend the bipod even longer. If you were to utilize this, it raises the gun almost an entire foot off the ground. So I don't see a practical purpose for that if you're laying prone, unless you're, you know, you have a big chest or anything like that, or you're trying to look over some sort of obstacle but i guess the feature is there so it's definitely a nice bipod as well i should mention that it comes with the gun so it saves you anywhere between 35 to 40 dollars depending on what you look at so that's definitely a nice feature and then again there is um on the flip side which i'll show you guys uh when i turn the gun over there's two lock nuts um that are screwed into the rail system you were to you can kind of see the bottoms of them right here you simply take a phillips screwdriver unscrew those and your whole rail system itself will just slide out. Now your outer barrel and your gas system uh, on the inside, it's a mock gas system, but those will stay attached, but this rail system will simply slide down because the real steel version is supposed to have a quick barrel change system so you can change the length of the actual barrel. So that's definitely a cool feature as well. They kept that real steel um, integrity on the rifle itself so all right guys that's the front half of the gun i'm gonna go ahead and all right guys out. now that we're looking at the upper and lower receiver we start to get the idea of the attention to detail that vfc has put into this gun starting from the very top i'm gonna go over the trades really quickly so that you guys can get an idea of what it actually says simply up at the top you have a small h and k trade moving down if you look right above the magazine well it says h and k h and k 417d being that this is utilizing the same body that the h and k 417d made by vfc of course uses or the hk 417dl utilizes this simply has a longer inner barrel and a longer rail system and longer outer barrel so all that aside moving again back to the trademarks below the 417d it also says caliber 762 millimeter by 51 just like the real steel so definitely a nice nice trademark there and they're all laser engraved they're not painted on so i don't see them coming off anytime soon if we look at the magazine below while it's in the magazine well, it does have the dummy bullets inside of it. So those are a nice detail added as well as the retention spring that you would see inside the 417 magazine pushing the bullets into the chamber. So definitely a nice feature as well that a lot of magazines tend to miss or those tend to be a little bit crappy looking. So I was happy with the quality of this magazine. Um, if we look at more of the body of the gun, it does have a steel uh, mag catch and release as well as a um, bolt catch and release. So both of those are made out of steel. The trigger assembly itself is steel. Um, if we see right in here, I know it might be kind of hard to see. This is actually the uh, individualized serial number that these guns come with. So I have number 277 out of 350. Uh, number one, if I understand correctly, went to EVIC. It got personally signed by H&K as well as VFC. So congrats to them. Uh, I believe they have it on display, so they're not really utilizing it, but uh, they were sent out in random, so it didn't exactly go one, two, three, four, five, up to whatever, it went to Evic, and then the rest went to other stores. It was randomized, so you never know what numbers each store was getting. So um, that was kind of a cool, fun feature. And then if we look at the fire selector switch, I'm a huge fan of having these painted in. I've never actually had one that came stock with it painted. I've always had to do it myself, which looks kind of crappy. So I was really, really excited that this had that done for me. Um, and it's very, very stiff, which I like. It, you can adjust it with a small Allen key. However, these are definitely not going to slide out of place. Um, so I like that feature as well. If we move further down here, uh, we have our ergonomic pistol grip. Now, it's actually a lot larger than the standard M4 grips or even the Magpul grips that you can buy um, aftermarket for these guns. So if you have small hands, it may not be as comfortable for you. But personally, I think it gives a little bit more heft when I'm shooting the gun. Since it's a heavier gun, I feel like having a bigger grip kind of makes it feel a little bit more comfortable for my taste. Um, and it's obviously got perforation both on the back and either side of it to help gloved fingers uh, grip it. So 
All right, the last thing I have to show you really, aside from a few extra features, is how to adjust your motor height. If you can see this little wheel, you simply turn it and it will expose your Allen key bolt, if you will. So you simply adjust your wheel or adjust the motor height at this point. So it's kind of nice that it gives you that so it's, it's protected so it's not going to get any mud or any dirt or anything like that in it while you're playing in the game, especially if you're going to be sniping. Occasionally that can collect a lot of dirt. Uh, if we move back up to the charging handle, I have an interesting feature that I'll tell you about. I'm actually going to show you when I flip over and show you the dust cover. So we'll leave that for a later part of the video. But we have a little trademark here with a bullet pointing backwards that says open. Um, and this is our rear iron sight. So simply you flip that up. It's adjustable just for windage um, And it just has a small aperture. So being that this is a DMR it doesn't have the Same rear iron sight that the H&K 417D has um, Same with the front sight. It is integrated into the rail system itself. Alright guys, now that we're looking but at the stock, I'm really excited about this thing um, It's an exact replica of the real steel 417 stock with the buffer pad as we can see here so it also has a larger buffer tube meant for a 760 or 308 round so if you wanted to go ahead and switch this out and either put this stock on an m4 or any other airsoft gun for that matter it will not fit and if you wanted to of course put a crane stock from an m4 or m16 things like that onto this gun that it will not fit on this since again the buffer tube is larger so that's just an interesting thing to note. Um, to adjust it, there is a adjustment button that you would push here, similar to what you would see on a crane stock, and then it'll just lock into place like that. See, we hear the snap, it's locked into place. Um, and then simply just to push it back in, you would utilize the same feature here. I'm gonna flip over so that I can get it to lock again. So it's, it's a little bit stiff, which I like though, so it's not gonna come out of place when you're running or trying to adjust it in the field. It does have an H&K trade here, but it's kind of hidden since it's in black. We also have two stock adjustment points. Now it is made out of that nylon reinforced, um, or nylon fiber reinforced plastic. There's one here and then there's one on the reverse side of the stock as well. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to use that. Uh, it doesn't seem to be the most strong, especially for the extra weight that this gun has. But, you know, it's, it's there if you wanted to use it. If we look at the ability to actually get in and put in our batteries, simply you take this and you would twist it to the left. Um, and then it will just come off. It's just like that. So it's going to be hard for me to show you guys this. So I'm not going to actually turn the gun around. But it has a small to my connector as we see here. And there is a relatively large space inside here for either crane stock batteries. So you have um, two slots running here. One on the opposite side. And then you have obviously the whole buffer tube hollowed out for any sort of nunchuck style battery. Butterfly battery. Or you can even house a LiPo. Which this gun is LiPo ready. Which I'll mention more when I talk about about the actual internals of the gun itself. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. You simply, as I did there, put it on and then twist the opposite direction. It can be a little All right, guys, now that we're looking at the right side of the gun, I'm gonna briefly go over the trademarks on this side before I get into what's inside the gearbox. Starting from the top of the gun, we look at the rear iron sight. It simply says right and left, or R and L. So that way, depending on which direction you turn that knob there, um, it'll move your aperture in the respective direction in which you turn. So pretty self-explanatory. Moving down to right here, this is my one and only complaint about the gun so far, is that it actually has the laser engraved warning label. Um, it doesn't have a sticker, so I can't exactly remove that. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. Um, Moving further down, you have the same uh, fire selector options painted on this side as well as the left side, so that's definitely cool. And then it says caliber 6mm BB right here, so I don't really mind this trademark as much as the warning label, but again, personal preference, some people probably don't care, and some may care more than me, so it's up to you guys to determine that. Um, if we look right above the magwell on this side, it says Heckler and Cock GmbH, and then of course licensed trademark of Heckler and Cock GmbH. So just like the real steel. Um, so getting to the charging handle and the bolt system that I maybe talked about on the other side, I can't exactly remember. Um, it's relatively unique. So this features a locking bolt system, and if you don't know what that means, what it means is simply you pull the charging handle back and there will be a dummy bolt that will follow and it will simply lock here and then of course you would use the bolt release to you would press the top of it and it would lock the bolt back home but the unique feature about this one is you simply pull this back and if you can tell it's actually 
locking the bolt fully back so I can utilize the entire space that I have here. So I just think that's kind of a cool feature. The hop up unit itself is right here. Um, so it wouldn't really make a difference if the bolt came all, halfway back or all the way back. But I think it's kind of cool that this is one of the first ones that I've seen that actually brings the bolt fully back. And then of course we can use that bolt lock or bolt catch system to move the bolt fully back into place. Now, as you can see here, it says H and K on the dummy bolt itself, just like the real steel gun does. Um, and you can also notice sometimes there's a gap here um, to, to remedy that. You simply just push the bolt forward, but other times it doesn't do that. If you see that time, um, the bolt went fully forward. So, um, you know, it's something that happens. You can probably lubricate the backside of the dummy bolt if you really wanted to, but me, it, you know, I very rarely will utilize that feature. It's just something cool. The dust cover itself is also made out of aluminum. It's two and a half millimeters thick, so I don't see you bending it or breaking it anytime soon as well. So, um, all right, guys. Now looking at the heart and soul of this gun, the gearbox itself, it's going to be made obviously of metal and it's highly reinforced, so that's definitely nice. I don't see this thing breaking on us anytime soon. So, getting to the internals, it utilizes some um, eight millimeter steel bushings. It also comes stock with an M130 spring with a steel ball bearing spring guide, so that will obviously help to reduce the pressure and compression behind the um, heavy spring that this thing comes with. Now I know it's not directly related, but it does utilize a long type motor, so if you guys wanted to ever upgrade that, make sure you get the appropriate length. Um, it has a polycarbonate piston with an aluminum ported piston head, and going right in line with that, it uses a standard version 2 cylinder, so again, pretty swappable in that respect. Um, this cylinder head is actually a version 2, and it's padded, which the padding on it is actually relatively soft. I think VFC did that to kind of compensate for the aluminum piston head. Um, so it's not quite as soft as sorbethane, but it does help quiet down the gun. So that's definitely a nice feature. And then the nozzle that it comes with actually has a really nice O-ring inside of that as well. So I've been really happy and positively surprised with the amazing compression that this thing has stock. I've actually never owned a gun that has as good of compression as this thing does, so I don't see myself really upgrading any of this, so that's definitely cool. Um, getting to the gear set, it's a standard version 2, and it's steel gears, and it does come with a delayer chip built into them, so that's definitely nice as well. Now, if we look at the hop-up unit itself, you may have been able to notice this when I showed you guys the actual um, bolt system. However, what this gun utilizes is it's not a standard you hop up unit it's similar to the mad bull op ultimate hop up so i'll kind of bring this thing back to show you again if you can see it um hopefully you can the wheel itself actually turns this way as opposed to parallel to the barrel like a standard hop up unit does so basically when you fire there is some sort of recoil from the piston hitting against the piston head and that can occasionally wobble your actual hop up gear which can then reduce your hop up but this since it's actually transversely mounted towards your or in retrospect to your barrel you essentially don't have to worry about that as much so this is very similar to the Madable op ultimate hop-up unit that I have installed in my other DMR that I've built and I am incredibly happy with it so no issues there and I don't see myself changing that anytime soon either um, and then lastly again the barrel itself is a 540 millimeter 6.04 type bore um, so if you wanted to upgrade that, I really don't see a purpose. Maybe get a 6.01 if you wanted to make this simply a DMR. Again, I'm going to utilize it more as a battle rifle, so I'll probably just leave that stock barrel. But um, with all of these upgrades and all of these stock internals that they've given us from VFC, um, the gun itself is quoted at firing 800 BBs per minute while utilizing a 9.6 volt battery. And now they do say that the gun is LiPo ready. Um, so that being said, take that piece of information at your own risk, of course. Um, so if we were to put an 11.1 .1 LiPo in this thing, it would fire at close to 1,000 BBs per minute. So that is huge. Um, definitely some nice uh, stats from a stock gun. One thing that I did forget to mention that I just thought of now is as well, um, the, this gun, being that it has the steel gear set, um, it utilizes the self-shimming gears that VFC has been known to put in. So simply that means it just has springs on it. So it'll keep an optimal level between um, the gearbox and other gears um, in relative to that spring. So 
Um, it, a lot of people change those out in shimming with uh, regular shims, so I'll see how they actually function in a longevity standpoint and see if I need to start shimming them. All right, so, guys, so that is basically it. And so for my final conclusion, I would definitely say if you guys have the money, I've seen this gun listed anywhere from 550 all the way up to $700. So again, if you have the money, definitely add this thing to your, your arsenal. I mean, this thing is awesome i i haven't had a chance to play it i have a game coming up here soon and i can't wait to see the the look on the opponent's faces the look on my teammates faces when i get this thing out of the gun case for its first time on the field so uh if again if you have the money be sure to pick one up while they last i mean you can't go wrong with the cnc aluminum body the awesome reinforced and internal gearbox specs that i just listed out for you that it comes with stock um, and the fact that this thing is potentially lipo ready is i mean you can't go wrong whether you want to use it as a sniper rifle or a battle rifle um it's really up to you and the fact that it comes with the included gun case the bipod and as you see here i finally have the iron sights flipped up for you to give you a little bit of perspective for that um, you can certainly use those or you can slap on an iron sight and utilize that huge monolithic top rail that it has there so you can't go wrong no matter what you choose to do with this gun i hope you guys are just as enthused about it as i am and i hope you guys enjoyed this video so please feel free to ask any questions you have about it anything you want me to go over again go into better detail or show better i will very happily do it as i plan on keeping this gun for a very long time so thank you guys so much for watching and uh, be sure to check back for any further updates or any further airsoft related videos. Thanks guys.